All right, good afternoon, everybody. Hello, and welcome to Shenandoah National Park and to the Youth Art Contest Winners Ceremony for 2024. My name is Margaret Rosiam. I'm the Education Program Manager here in Shenandoah National Park and the organizer for the Youth Art Contest this year. So it has been my absolute pleasure to see the process of everyone sending in their artwork and how hard you all have worked. So we're very excited to be able to recognize all of you today. So this year, our contest was open to students K through 12 throughout Virginia and the District of Columbia. And we are thrilled to say that we had over 130 applicants to the youth art contest. A lot of youth submitted some really incredible artwork um, but today, while all of the submissions were special, today we honor 12 winners. So from that K through 12, we have four grade categories. Um, kindergarten through second grade, third through fifth grade, sixth through eighth grade, and ninth through 12th grade. Of those 12 winners, one uh, it has been named best in show, and we will announce that winner today. Um, so while some of our entrants couldn't make it, we will be honoring everybody today, but if you are in the crowd, when we call your name, please come on up, show off your incredible artwork, uh, and receive some very special prizes. So when we do mail your artwork back to you, you will also be receiving a special uh, winner's button along with your artwork back, but uh, we do have a couple things for you today as well. Um, so with me, we have a very special guest, Betty Gatewood. So I'd like to let her say a little bit about herself and her experience being one of the judges for the Youth Art Contest. Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> She's also a teacher. <laughs> Does it show? Also a teacher. Yeah, I taught middle school, seventh grade science for 20 some years. Then I went to Mary Baldwin University and helped teachers get their kids outside to do the kinds of things that I like to do. It was in a graduate program. And then after that, I was lucky enough to get a position here in Shenandoah, and I was a ranger here for three, three seasons. And then once um, that was over, my husband retired, I thought, mm, okay, uh, he would you know, see me going out the driveway with a... <laughs> He was there with his second cup of coffee at 7.15 and I was hitting the road, so I thought maybe it's time. So I did that, but we still volunteer, don't we, Dale? <laughs> we volunteer here in the park, like today, and like judging the youth art contest and helping out the pest management. Did I say that right? Pest management? Okay. Um, forest health. Forest health. May I, may I introduce uh, yes. Virginia's forest health? Program Manager Lori Chamberlain from the Virginia Department of Forestry. Oh, hello. So, I think we were doing so the, the Gatewoods monitor the Laracobius beetles on one of our release sites. Oh, I think, uh, yeah, I think you trained us or you trained us when we were over the mountain. Uh, yeah, very good. So nice to see you again. Happy yeah. to be here today. So when I was working here, I did not judge. I mean, that would be conflict of interest, right? So after I finished, then they said, well, would you like to judge? Because I like to um, get up close and personal with plants. I like to uh, get down on my belly and smell them if I need to. And my botany professor used to say, those are belly flowers. <laughs> and um, sometimes they're big, sometimes they're small. But I enjoyed uh, looking at them, smelling them, and trying to draw them. So uh, I enjoyed looking at all of the uh, entries. I was so impressed with the creativity. Oh my gosh, you know, you might wanna just do a plant. You might wanna do a background. You might wanna put it in a landscape. And that's where the artistic part and choice comes in. So it was all really, really, some of them had borders. We had some too that were macrame uh, uh, or needlepoint. So, you know, however it is that you want to do your art and it like and you like it, that's the way you need to do it. So we had fun doing that, didn't we? Oh Margot didn't judge. She I did. No. But I got to see it all. That's right. And then she sent us all these pictures. So 138? 133 this. 133, yeah. So glad that you're here. And honestly, exactly what's happening in this room, the community is why we do this youth art contest. We're so thrilled that we have generations of visitors in this room to celebrate the incredible artistic talent and the passion that all of you have displayed. So uh, I wanna say thank you to all of our winners. It's always fun to host, but this year felt a little extra special with uh, the array of entries that we have had. 
So we're going to go ahead and get started with our kindergarten through second grade category. Uh, first, we have Bethany. So Bethany is showing her artwork here. Uh, so Bethany is in second grade from Appomattox, Virginia, and used watercolor pencils to create this beautiful downy yellow violet. So downy yellow violets, although small, can be quite fragrant. And in the late 19th century, they were even used to make perfume. Uh, so judges really loved the shading and the bee lines and how the delicacy and emotion of this flower came through in your artwork. So Beautifully thank done. you and congratulations. Two years ago, she attended Betty's workshop out front here. It shows. Your artwork is amazing. Yeah, and you know, the tracks for the insects. So the bees know where to go where the honey is, honey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Bethany. All right. Next up, we have Dylan. This way, Dylan. See if we got the camera. So go look at this. So Dylan is in kindergarten from Charlottesville, Virginia, and created this piece titled "A Rainbow of Wildflowers" that includes skunk cabbage, Dutchman's breeches. Bluets, dogwood, jack in the pulpit, and bluebells. So judges loved the exuberance of biodiversity represented here, and saw that the flowers and leaves' true shape and the multicolored background brought a unique flair to them. So wildflowers like these are already emerging throughout the park, and some of them are the earliest signs of spring in Shenandoah. So jack in the pulpit is one of my favorites in this, and it's one that requires rich, moist, deciduous woods and floodplains. So it's a really good thing that we've had so much rain recently that you may be able to catch a glimpse of these in our forests. Yes, very good. <laughs> one of the things I thought about this too is creativity. Some of them, like the skunk cabbage coming down from the top instead of from the bottom, whatever. I mean, it's their artwork and whatever they want to do. So congratulations, Thank Dylan. Thank you, Dylan. There you go. Thank you for entering, and there is your certificate. Okay, and here is your book. And you can leave your art up here if you'd like, where you can take it. Did you see this? Cross that. Okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, we all want to see that when we're all yes. finished. <laughs> and all of these will be displayed in the visitor center for a few oh, weeks uh, after today. Next up, we have Maya. So Maya is in first grade from Stewart's Draft, Virginia, and depicted this beautiful flowering dogwood art. So this is the state tree of Virginia, so it's very special. Spring displays showy white spring flowers like you can see in Maya's depiction, but fall brings an array of deep colors as the leaves change. So this is a favorite year round for a lot of visitors. Judges really loved the forward facing petals to see the amount of detail that you portrayed in a wonderful piece that focuses on the flower itself. Betty may have some additional comments for you. Well, I was just so amazed with this because there's shading here around the edges and then a, a, a background that looks like the sky whenever it's blooming. I, did you mean for that to be that way? <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful, Maya. Thank you for doing that. Here you go. And here is a book. Now, in case you didn't know, this book. You want to talk about the book? We can talk about it at the end. Now? Later? Later. Okay. Yeah, you got to get this book. But the winners get it. That's right. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're going to move on to the third grade through fifth grade category. Uh, so our first winner uh, is Vera. Oh, I'm so glad you wore your pink. Um, <laughs> so Vera is in fourth grade from Front Royal, Virginia, and was inspired by wild geranium to create this piece titled Ladybug Labyrinth. <laughs> so wild geranium have rounded petals and a beautiful array of pink and purple colors. And you can find them growing about one and a half to two feet tall from the forest floor, and you may even notice their large stamen as you're hiking past. So judges noticed an attention to detail on the flower, balanced with the whimsy of the flower, being part of the habitat with a cardinal and ladybug in there. Very well done. 
we'll see this out in the meadow, and, and maybe we can come close to getting her rendition of it if we try. Beautifully done. Yes, I love the shading. Very well done, Vera. Thank you. And that bird, whoa, mm -hmm. terrific. There you go. Thank you so much for entering. And All right. Next up, we have Charisma. So Charisma is in fourth grade from Virginia Beach, Virginia, and used the bluet flower as the focus for this piece titled Blooming the Bluets. <laughs> so bluets are a small perennial that may reach six inches in height, and while lower to the ground, they are often striking with a pale blue or white petal and a vibrant yellow center, which kind of sticks out against that forest floor. So judges enjoyed that detail in accuracy and detail in color and shading were both apparent. The arrangement made them feel like the flower was almost in motion on the page. Yes. Eddie, do you have any other comments yes, for I me? I just love the color. She's got some of the petals this way, some of the petals this way. Once again, it's a personal choice about how you want to represent the plant. And she did a beautiful job. Nicely done. Charisma. That Very well done. Thank you. All right, next up we have Leland. So Leland is in fourth grade, also from Appomattox, Virginia, and used watercolor pencils and watercolor paints to show this round-lobed hepatica. So I do want to give Leland a shout out because Leland even went back and resubmitted to add detail of the liver-lobed leaves, so really paying attention to that detail. So also known as liver leaf, the round-lobed hepatica bears white, pink, blue, or lavender flowers on leafless, hairy stems. And judges love the use of space and shaping, as well as the combination and the flow of colors in that. Betty, do you have any yeah. other comments for oh, Leland? I was real amazed as well, because of, he shows it on the ground, and then the greenery perhaps behind it in the sky. And then that, uh, against the green, those lavender flowers are just beautiful. And why does it have three, uh, three, pep, three lobes on that? What's a, this is like a liver. It's like a liver. <laughs> Did you know that your liver has three lobes? Okay, and so, yeah, a lot of hepatica, hepatica things. <laughs> Thank you. to our 6th through 8th grade category and uh, honor a couple of winners. So first up, we have Zoe. So Zoe is in sixth grade from Dumfries, Virginia, uh, and created Azalean Dreams, a color pencil, marker, and acrylic depiction of Rose Azalea. So while often growing slowly, they can get up to two feet tall and just as wide, creating a bush-like show of color popping against those dark green leaves. So judges were wowed by the form, the color, the lines, the lighting, and background all coming together, and one even asked, how did you do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you have any other comments, Betty? Well, it's stunning, isn't it? Yes. It's stunning, and she has, it looks to me like this is the cover or a page out of a journal. Now that is something that takes nerve, right? When you have a journal and you're putting stuff in a journal, who's gonna look at it? Well, it's up to you. But the detail here, and the, the stamens and the pistol, just beautiful. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I hope you get to see, have you seen that in the park before, Zoe? Yes. Oh, good, good, good. Well, you did a beautiful job, and thank you for doing just that. Okay. Yes. All right. So we would also like to honor a winner from this category, Evie, if you wouldn't mind holding Evie's art for us. Evie was not able to be here with us today, but Evie is in seventh grade from Gum Spring, Virginia, and created this beautiful dwarf-crested iris. So this showy, wrinkly-looking flower is named for its crested ridges, which shows off a beautiful blue, purple, violet, and is endemic to the eastern U.S. So judges thought this piece was beautifully done, 
and where you did not shy away from a close-up detail but got the leaves, the space, and the color just right really popped for them in this uh, depiction. Definitely. Uh, this is in bloom in the flower guard, a flower box right outside the visitor center here. So if you want to see that, this is Evie's. Oh. Yeah. Oh. How did you happen to have it? It was stuck. Oh, it was stuck? <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> All right. Well, Evie will be mailed her, um, her yeah. prizes and certificate. Uh, along with her art when it's mailed back. But. Okay, good. And the other thing, too, is how, how maybe they want to do a border around it. Hey, whatever. So I thought that was very, very beautifully done. All right, so congratulations, Evie. All right. We're going to jump ahead. We'll pop back to that category, but we're going to jump ahead to the ninth through 12th grade category. And first, we are going to honor yeah. Isabel, who was not able to be here. But Betty can display her art again for us. So Isabel is in 11th grade from Charlottesville, Virginia, and created this vibrant pinkster flower. So pinkster azalea are deciduous woody shrubs that love moist woodlands throughout SNP. Again, a really great time of year uh, because we're getting a lot of rain in Shenandoah. So hopefully you'll be able to see some of this pinkster popping in the forest. Judges were impressed by the wonderful lighting and shading to properly show the white flowers with emotion and perfection. And those are quotes. Anything else, Betty? Um, the, the background makes the flower pop, even though when you're on a hike, it's going to pop anyway. But this even uh, accents it um, or emphasizes it better. The other thing that, that sometimes you might want to think about, too, is when you're doing a flower, perhaps the arrangement. And so we talk in the botanical art world about doing things in threes or fives or sevens or whatever. And so you can see that's what she did. There's one, two, three, four, five. So I thought that was really well done. Beautifully done. All right, thank you. Is that digital or is that? Yeah, I, yeah, did she say what the medium was? It looks No, it's like not digital because you can feel the no, texture no, to it. Um, it's hard to see from here. I think it's probably acrylic, perhaps, and this to me looks like gouache, which is a type of watercolor. I don't know. Yeah. This is why I have that. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we are going to honor one more person that could not be here uh, in person, but Kaya, uh, in 10th grade from Bridgewater, Virginia, made mountain laurel come to life on this page. So as a shade-tolerant shrub, this is often found in the forest and can be seen along many of the hiking trails in Shenandoah. And this is their time to shine, so keep your eyes peeled. Judges called this piece exquisite, with the curling of the leaf to show the underside of some of them, and it felt like it looked so real to them. Yeah, definitely, to see the, the movement of the plant, the leaves down here, and the variety of colors in the flowers themselves. Beautiful. All right, so again, Kaya will be mailed their prizes. Uh, but next up, in person with us, we have Lamaya. So oh, amazing. So Lamaya is in ninth grade from Luray, Virginia, and used a mixed media from book pages, watercolor, yarn, and paper to build this 3D artistic depiction of yellow star grass. So the spacing between the petals makes this small flower pop, especially with its long grass-like leaves that you can see protruding. So while it may look small, it'll look a lot bigger when you see it in person, taking up a lot of space on that forest. And so judges felt that you captured the essence of this plant in an accuracy and a beauty, but in such a creative way that they really uh, thought stood out from a lot of the other pieces entered this year. So any other yeah. comments, Betty? Well, I just thought that it was terribly creative. <laughs> Terribly creative yarn, and and then like she said, it pops, and you've got a little bit of the background, or the background. How did you decide about the background? I had to like switch wrap it because the yellow was up here. Oh, very yeah. nice, very nice. Well, I think it's the only one that we had that was three dimension. I think so. We have another one maybe, but the ones that popped off the off the sheet were only yours. <laughs> so congratulations. All right. And then
then we're going to jump back somewhat into our 6th through 8th grade category uh, to highlight not just a winner of the 6th through 8th grade category, but this year's best in show, Isabel. So Isabel is in 7th grade from Falls Church, Virginia, and the winning art piece is of yellow lady slippers. This wild orchid type uh, flower has a slipper-like shape, and is a rarer flower that has a unique story. So only a small pollinator can navigate into the flower, but only a very small one can navigate out through the almost invisible exit hole at the end of it. So any larger risks getting stuck inside, and this beautiful and complicated story is expressed in the art shown here and felt by the judges. So this piece was voted as best in show because judges were in awe. Some of the comments from judges included, quote, this is breathtaking. And, quote, is this a photo? <laughs> because the form, sharpness of details, colors, and even texture were so well done that they all agreed that it was definitely a best in show. Yeah. Yeah. I had to ask her, what was your challenge in doing this? Can you tell the rest of the group what, your, what was the problem in actually doing this? Um, the petals, like the way they twist, they were challenging to color. Because they change color from front to back. She did it beautifully. Look at that. Look at that. Right there. And she also said she used several different media, right? You used for the background? Um, soft pastel. Yes. And then the, the flower itself. Colored pencil. <coughs> so anybody who wants to try any way of doing it, it's a good one. Good for you. This is just beautiful. Great. Okay, it's done. Guess what you get, girl? <laughs> <laughs> you want to read it out loud as to what you get there? Um, $75 gift certificate. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so that is to the Shenandoah National Park Association. Uh, they run the bookstore out there um, and run a lot of other events in our park. Um, but all winners ha uh, will be mailed a button when we mail their art back. Um, and some comments from the judges as well. Uh, if you were not able to be here, we will mail you your certificate and this book as well. As Betty said, this is from Ann and Rob Simpson uh, called The Wildflowers of Shenandoah National Park. Uh, Ann Simpson is here today and they give walks uh, throughout the National Park on Wildflower Weekend and other times of year. So they are absolutely assets to the park. They are incredible naturalists and uh, are kind enough to um, support the incredible artwork and the passion and the detail and beauty that you all have captured in this year's showing. So we just want to say thank you again so much for all of your hard work that you put into your art. Thank you for coming to Shenandoah National Park. I hope that you get to see your flower or at least some other amazing flowers this weekend. And we hope to see, if you're not in 12th grade, we hope to see your art again submitted next year uh, and see how you've grown as an artist and a naturalist throughout your time. But uh, if we haven't checked in with you, please come up, make sure that we have the correct address to mail your art back to. All of these will be displayed in the visitor center for a few weeks to celebrate the absolute incredible artwork that you all have done and to celebrate a welcoming of spring up on the mountain. So thank you again. Let's give a round of applause to all of our